for this episode of the Weird Obscure World Podcast. I have been abducted. Wait, what? The main forms they take are reptilian entities. Welcome to the show. Welcome. We uh, recently got back from a, a trip into the desert. Yeah, was, uh, went out to Area 51 and on the way back saw some sights. Yeah, so we had we had kind of planned our trip to do kind of a loop. You know, take the normal way down, the extraterrestrial highway, and then we wanted to make a couple of stops. One of them was to do our live at the Clown Motel, mm-hmm. which was really creepy and cool we're going to do a full show when we have the opportunity to stay the night yeah we're going to go out there and betsy's going to stay in the clown room and i'm going to stay (laughs) down the street yes so it the clown motel um the whether it's haunted or not is a neat motel um the guy that runs it is super uh, cool guy uh, the guy he is super genuine super awesome guy came from india came over here bought the clown motel and loves clowns crazy always has since he was a kid yeah who does that anyway he's fulfilled his lifelong dream of owning a motel that is completely based on clowns. yeah so uh look for that on uh youtube as well the clown motel walkthrough yeah Today, we are going to, uh, at the end of this little intro, share a video with you of Goldfield, which mm. is, it's a, uh, what, northeast, uh, uh, northwest, northwest of Las Vegas. Yeah. A couple of hours. South of uh, Tonopah. Yeah, south of Tonopah. Um, Goldfield was a boomtown in the first, the first decade of the 20th century. The reason it's named Goldfield is because they found gold there. And between 1903 and 1940, their mines produced more than 86 million. It was like the biggest town yeah. in uh, Las Vegas. It, or in Nevada. <clears throat> and at oh, one... Yeah. In, 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 Las, in Las Vegas. The biggest town in Las Vegas. That's so not Las Vegas. It, it had... In, by 1904, the Goldfield District produced 800 tons of ore, which was valued... At like two billion. Mm. So, and that's then. Yeah, big thing. At it at its height, to to give it more perspective, at least this helped me to get more perspective. At its height, it had twenty three grocery stores. That little dog leg town. Yes. Like, the town I live in has one. Yeah. The town Jared lives in has three. Yeah. So this had 23 grocery stores. It had 47 mm. saloons. Well, that's it, not near. And enough. it had over 100 barber shops. Mm. So it was a, it was a boom town. Absolutely a boom town. They had a couple of, of really sad things happen. Um, one was a flood that wiped out quite a bit of the town but the biggest thing was when the mines dried up so the town went from huge enormous expansive town to this tiny little dot on the map which by the way is really cool really eclectic it's an artsy little place like it's got these old buildings and Mm -hmm. and uh people build mad max trucks there and decorate vehicles they a lot of a lot of interesting stuff if you get the chance drive through yeah and if you do get the chance to drive through you really should stop and see steve and jerry fouts yes so they have vacation rentals there she also manages a little um like gift store and she has um she has taken over quite essentially the visitor center um, she's revamped it. She's included the community in that. 
Yeah, she's they're transplants from Oregon, right? From Grants Pass, Oregon. She said that she drove through there and was just fell in love with the eclectic nature of the town. Yeah, so they retired and moved down there and and uh really both of them are stepping up to do their best to preserve this town. And you can find them at justjerry.com. She's a uh, she was very humble. She's an amazing photographer. But I have since then looked at her her portfolio, and she is an amazing photographer. Mm. She really has an eye for the art of photography. And they're both just very cool people. And he's a retired physician. Uh-huh. Uh, turned handyman. He's now, I mean, he's, for one, he's doing a lot of the renovations on the tour that we're going to share with you in a minute the Goldfield um, High School or the Goldfield School because it likely had all the grades at one point. Yeah. Or, yeah. It's, it's a, uh, it's, and while you're there, check in to stay in the night into uh, the, uh, the old uh, room for rent of ill repute. Yes. Yes. The, what was it? The lady's name was Katie or something? Or? Um, I think so. I'd have to think about that. So they have vacation rentals, and one of them happens to be They're like little bungalows. Yeah, one of them happens to be. It used to be uh, one of the little side houses for a brothel. Well, okay, the old brothels, they each had like their own little cabin. Yes. And so you would go, and when you stayed at at um, one of the ladies' rooms. You would go stay in her cabin. Well, they've got one of those cabins on their property. And they've renovated it. And it's it's quite nice in there. And you go in and uh, it's like a, a rental bungalow. Yeah. And she does say that um, people report um, lots of ghost activity. Or, yeah, paranormal yeah, activity. Yeah, paranormal activity. But it's, war- it's not scary, the scary type. It's the right. warm type. So... We originally stopped there because Goldfield has a history of paranormal activity, but likely from the tremendous amount of residual energy that rushed in, rushed out. There's a disjointed kind of energy that you commonly find in these old mine towns um, because it's like an abrupt stop. Mm-hmm. It's crazy how fast they go up. It's even crazier how fast they become oh, ghost yeah. towns. I mean, it takes years and years to build these buildings. And then overnight, everyone packs up and leaves. Yeah, they just... You know, curtains are still swinging in the wind. Yep. It's crazy. So I think that that is one of the reasons that this town is so well known for its paranormal activity. I mean, Ghost Hunters has been there. Lots of other paranormal shows have been there. Yeah, real paranormal shows, not a shoestring number. Yeah. Like, like shows with producers uh, and... The people that actually study this. We just like to talk about it. Yeah. But these people actually study it, and they've been to Goldfield for that for that reason, amongst others. I think another thing would be the flood. The mm. flood came in so high, it was at the tops of the houses. And you can yeah. find pictures of this online, but bodies were found... A mile and a half away when the floodwaters receded. So couple those together with its long history. This Goldfield High School is easily one of the top five coolest buildings I've ever been in. Oh, yeah. It's old, but the way they built it, they built it to, um, to be neat and imposing inside and out. Yeah. It's, it's got great big grand staircases. We're going to go through ceilings. an entire tour of that. Um, and it does have a lot of residual energy feel to it. They have had... Betsy notices that. Yes. I, I, they had um, one television show coming in to do taping. And Steve, Jerry's husband, is the one who actually took us on the tour... He said that the television show had scheduled to be there till 3 a.m. And they arrived at just after 9 Mm p.m. And at midnight, they were like, yeah, we're out. We've got more information. We've got more footage than we could ever need. We're we're good. And then another um, paranormal crew went in with a music box. And and Steve will tell you, you know, we've actually got the footage of him retelling that tell on the... uh, 
the footage that's going to be at the end of this. Yes. So now the beginning of this recording was outside. We get a lot of uh, wind pollution on the mic. So what we're doing is we're going to be playing this parts of this over that and the intro over that. So we're going to try to clean it up so that um, the, the viewers don't have to enjoy that, which we didn't notice. We weren't. Yeah, we it, weren't as prepared for recording as we should have been. We didn't have a person in headphones to kind of review as we recorded. Uh, not much that you can do in in the conditions like that because it was really windy that day. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but we'll cut out anything that's you know that you can't understand, and uh, hopefully you guys all enjoy this spooky yes. haunted tour of this schoolhouse. Let us know what you think, and if you see anything, I've kind of been over the footage a couple of times. To see if I see anything, orbs and things moving in the background. But let us know what you see and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. They're uh, trying to keep it uh, standing. So if you have a chance, come to Goldfield. Yeah, all of the tour money is going to keep this old building from falling down. <laughs> it's a neat old building. So this is a 1907 building built in Boomtown in Boom Time. Um, it was, uh, there was about 400 students in it when it first opened. Wow. Uh -huh. K to 12, so it was a whole, a whole run. Um, the part about this here is that the, when the building was built, the mortar they used didn't have Portland cement in it. It was lime and sand. It doesn't hold up to the weather very well, particularly since this side of the building gets a, a freeze and, and thaw cycle every single day. We're oh. 6,000 feet, so we get down to 10 degrees at night, and then this, I'm sure this break gets up to 60 degrees every day. So it gets freeze and thaw after 100 years. That's a lot of freeze thaw cycles. Some of these original stones, but the original quarry is about five miles east of here. So if they, if they weren't original stones, they were from the original quarry. So some of them are more recently cut. Um, and you can see the, the stonework here. Is out. Um, you can see layers horizontally. We try to stay away from vertical layers. We'll talk about that when we go back in the building. And that column over the on the on the end there, you did a little bit. You don't want you don't want layers either vertically or horizontally but they sort of kind of tended into that. It's, in my view, it's a mistake. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's structurally strong, but um, anyway, we'll go over that when we when we get in. You can see the bottoms of the windows is a different style. There's more small stones. So there's one style of building here, another style of building here. The problem was when you find, when you get people to do stonework, everybody has their own view of what stonework should look like. And so, there's several different styles of stone. So you got the first guy building. built up to there. Yeah. And it'll and become then, a lot more obvious when we get inside. And he got tired. Found something else yeah. to do. And then another guy. Because you can see they've got some uh, just kind of fill-ins there. Like, oh, we'll exactly. two on that level because yeah. I've got two see, next to this me. This here, how many, how many different stones are on the road? Mm -hmm. and this guy didn't do that. This guy was, uh, had a very strong horizontal layer thing going on. Happen. And you can see up between these windows is sort of helter skelter. There's yeah. No pattern, no pattern is it's much stronger. It yeah. doesn't look right, but it's a lot stronger. I think it actually it. looks better. It looks well, so what you don't want to do is columns and rows. That's yeah. the worst. 
because you have I the didn't weak, know that. weak yeah. links. So if you get a crack, you get a crack, it goes all the way down the wall. If this and you get a crack, it eliminates to that stone or the stone below it, and it won't crack past that. So anyway, we'll talk about that later. But anyway, John, the, the president, is very effective at grant writing. Uh, and this is one of the few facilities around that has more money than we have people to work on. It. So we'll have grant money. It takes a year to find someone who can do that kind of stone work. Be willing to come here to do it and uh, and have it be the kind of quality it takes. So that's probably quite a lost art too. Well, yeah. everybody has their own, but yeah, to, what, what, what would be ideal is to find someone who can look at that and match that style and build that way. And no, but you want to, you would probably want to match it for what they initially had to the different. Yeah, and there's, there's not a lot of original stonework, but even then, the original stonework, there's at least three different styles there. Mm -hmm. So which one are you going to match? I would match it to the levels. Keep it so that it looks like a, three different people yeah. worked on it, you know? Everybody's got their own opinion. <laughs> yeah. you know, the guy whose opinion matters is the guy who's laying the stone. That's true. That's right. That's I true. just want it to be strong. He's the one that's lifting it. Yeah. Now what's going on here? Okay. It out. So I think this is due for replacing in October. The brick wall on this side should be done um, by the end of October. Now, one thing you notice about this side, this is the eastern side, so it gets freezed off and not as violent as well as the south side. So it's got an arch in it. And I think that's one reason this side to maintain. It's very durable, but it's just hard to find people that can do that. Yeah. It yeah. probably won't go with that when it's replaced. We got some structural work to do before we put a surface on it. But meanwhile, it leaks, and that's not good. So there's a lot of water damage inside. Tucker! Not you. <laughs> she comes around. Ghost dog! <laughs> there you go. These hinges, the doors original, you can see the finish on it. The hinges are original, I think they were engineered for sound. Oh, you hear that? Yeah. It's just a perfect sound. Yeah. Creepy. It is creepy. <laughs> it's a cre creepy creaky. Oh my goodness. So this is the subterranean level. Um, the younger class 
classes weren't here. Um, and like the kindergarten, second, to maybe up to third grade were in the lower level. Um, we sort of, all the, all the services are original. We haven't restored anything. Our purpose is not really to restore, but to keep it from falling down. To more of a rescue operation. Mm -hmm. Right. Operation. Now that might change later on. We can talk about that upstairs. But a couple things to notice how high the ceilings are. Oh um, yeah. It's up there. And um, there's a lot of wood. Uh, there's the original floor, a lot of wood on the walls, the stairways, all that. We sort of put all our resources into one classroom. So we'll go in there and you can see what we think it'll look like. Mm -hmm. system had a boiler and a radiator. The hotel has that. The, most of the other big buildings had a boiler and they stick it in hot water and you have a radiator on the wall that gets hot. Yeah. The problem is that when you have a high ceiling, the heat goes up and the ceiling is nice and warm, but down here on the ground is, is pretty chilly. So you find all the all the girls being sexist here, all the girls would congregate over by the heater and and they wouldn't wouldn't get anything done. So and it, when you get the ceilings up there, you have to have a different way heat or at least way to circulate. So this is, had forced air. There's a furnace room, uh, and they blew warm air everywhere instead of having a having a, 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 um, a radiator. Now there is a stove there, probably a coal stove. Um, I think that as the this is my own my own gospel here, as the the student population got smaller in the 30s and the blower got older, you know, that in 1937, that blower is now 30 years old. Probably needed maintenance, and if there's only 20, 25 kids here, what's the point? You don't need to heat the whole building. Say so pick three, four, or five classrooms, put a few grades together, and put in a stove. So there are three rooms in here that have stoves, look like they have stoves in. This is the only stove that stoves in. So you probably had like a, a elementary classroom, a Junior classroom. Yeah, that was K1, two, yeah. three, four, and then up to eight, and then at that point they went to Tonopah after eight to finish high school. Okay. Now, do you see those little chairs over there, Betsy? Uh huh. If you can pan the camera over there, they're like teeny tiny desks and chairs. And don't forget her. Yeah. And the creepy doll. <laughs> so, in the restoration of this. Have you guys experienced weird things in this building? This is this is considered. I've talked as much as you want to know. We have a lot of overnight people. Yeah. Um, they, they come in at uh, eight or nine o'clock at night. I bring my my uh, Jerry's RV over. Um, park it out here and plug the lights in. And so mm -hmm. if you have a bathroom and if they have monitoring equipment, they can plug it into the to the motorhome and, and they stay here for half the night. There was a movie crew about two weeks ago. And they were planning to stay all night and film stuff. And they, they checked down at midnight. So I was talking to them, hey, what's going on? They said, we have way more stuff than we need. So it only took them three hours to collect as much stuff as they wanted to get. So this would be... All night. So this we, is like central for well, activity. The, the hotel is, is the famous thing. But mm -hmm. as they're what I call destroying the hotel, they're remodeling it, they're covering up all these surfaces. If they were doing this, those windows would be gelled when you know, double pane windows, all the original wood would be gone, it would be sheetrock. This, all this finished wood, they're painting that, they're covering up the floors with new flooring material, and in my view, that's the destruction of the building. If you want a Las Vegas hotel, go to go Las, to Las Vegas. Vegas. Don't yeah. come to Goldfield. Come here to see history. Come here to see original stuff. So, as that, the last three groups that were in the hotel uh, with us, Got absolutely no activity at all, nothing. And so it's getting embarrassing to go in and say, Well, you know, behind that piece of shoe out, there's a tunnel to the red light district. Behind this one is a mine where we think right. some, some little girl died. Um, 
but it's paved over. And it's kind of a boring tour to say, under this piece of concrete, there's a tunnel. Under this tunnel. brand new piece yeah. of... So you wind up apologizing. I'm sorry this tour is so boring. Everything's covered up. But as that building has gotten less active, this one's got a lot more active. Mm. Um, we can talk about that as we go through, but there's a lot of activity going on here at night, even in the daytime. Um, we had three people here just, um, what's today, Sunday? Um, Friday night came in here and it was, it was very active at eight o'clock at night. We'll have to plan the trip out at night. And stay the night, you can. I, I would highly recommend it. If you're, it. It's never been scary to me. It's always been very interesting. Yes. I get very the feeling of a lot of kids here. Um, my sister was here just recently, and she was a school teacher, and she said, well, what kind of kids would want to go back and hang out at school after they die? My view, her view, is that they're kids that want to cause trouble. My view is the kids had a good time in school, want to yeah. go back and hang out. Yeah, let's imagine what their life was when school wasn't going yeah. on. Well, I had a great on. time in high school. I would love to go back and yeah. visit my high school. I would really enjoy that. Well, back in the days when this was going, I'm sure home life wasn't. You'd go home, home to Central Air. And Dad comes home tired, and Mom is sick all the time. And it's you've cold. got a split wood. You've this got is a... probably the only place where they had warmth and mm -hmm. water and, and a bathroom you can flush. Well, and a, and a lot of people don't believe, I mean, I guess there's two camps, but a lot of people don't believe that ghosts return but just that they never left it's the residual energy that was spent in this place that that the rest of us are experiencing I don't and know that, that would like people make up their own opinion <laughs> yeah but we were here there was a, pe a group of five people here and Jerry was here with us it was a couple weeks ago and it was in the in the daytime and we closed the door and have my my dog is like this all the time with a couple of exceptions it's like he's on a three foot leash he took off somewhere in the building and we're all standing here waiting to go out and heard a knock on the door. I mean, it was, it was just like that. And all of us, all seven of us, trying to look at the door to see who it is. And I'm thinking, I should have locked the gate because we want people running around in the right. yard. Are you going to break a window or something like oh. that? So we all turned towards the door and Dre went out to see who was out there. There's nobody there. So she went out in the yard. There's nobody in the yard. The gate's still closed. And it's like every one of us heard that knock. And it wasn't subtle. It was just like that. So, you know, that's kind of stuff happens. It's not scary, it's just very interesting to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm not gonna try to convince you of anything. No one in there in the group is gonna try to convince anyone. It's just, we all heard it. Yeah. You make what you make, I make what I make, and mm -hmm. we're all there, so. Yeah. Anyway, we'll so. To, we'll definitely have to make a trip out of it. This is a really cool yeah. little town. Well, yeah. What well, is, and this, I think this is among the best top three doors in the town. Hotel oh, wow. so we make a lot of guessing about what these rooms were because we weren't really known. They didn't write a lot of stuff down. It's just like day to day life and they didn't write it down. But Jerry thinks this was an exercise room, workout room. There's an outside door. There was a, um, a, a gymnasium across the street, Kitty Corner. Uh -huh. I think in 1907 they were playing basketball. I think basketball started yeah. in about 1870, something like that. Yeah. So my guess is they had basketball here. Uh, they almost certainly had baseball um, and probably football. Uh, yeah, well, my other popular sports back then would have been tennis, badminton. Yeah, um, could be. Um, anyway, the, this was the, was the biggest town in, in, in Nevada then. So whatever teams were in the state would have been here. Mm. Um, there's a map out there in the hallway we see on the way out that has, um, it's a 1907 map, and Goldfield is on it, Las Vegas is not even on the map. Mm. There was about 400 people living yeah, there. Yeah, Las Vegas was just a Mormon community Yeah, just a Mormon settlement, yeah. Interesting. So let's move on in the room. He got some activity in this room on that. Oh, really? Yeah. Cursive writing. Yeah. They don't teach cursive anymore. No, they don't. It's becoming a lost art. That's right. It's keyboarding. <laughs> keyboarding and texting. Yeah. Don't close this up. That's my truck and I yours. Oh, they've got a... We're locked in now, buddy. No. Top of the rock. No. I saw a dog on the stairs. <laughs> it's still there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So back in 07, if you're going to teach in school, you have to be female, you have to be single, you have to play piano. 
Yeah? So yeah. there's a lot of pianos in here. There probably was more than. There's some newspaper articles in Jerry's shop um, about teachers who get married and so they have to quit, you know, they go and party and all that for them. And it's a sad thing, but it's the way it goes. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, they, metal, but it's the way it was. Yeah, they weren't very politically correct back then, I suppose. Yeah, just keep them out. It's always sure now. So this is the drill bathroom. There's only one. This is it. So the bathroom back then had a tank on the wall. So that's what these were where the, the tanks hooked on. So the water was into the tank, you pull the cord, and the tank drains into the bowling flush. Okay. So there's one boiler left upstairs. Um, this flooring is actually from the hotel. The, it's a good, real good, bad example. They they cut up the flooring. Uh, this tower was pretty cool. Um, yeah, so they're cutting it up, and then someone retrieved this from the dump. So they just don't want to wear it. That's interesting. Who's Erica? What's that? Who's Erica? Yeah, someone wrote their name on it. I don't know. Maybe we've met the ghost. I think there's a Sarah in here. I don't know about her. So these are all white, but in the floor of the hotel, there's you know, patterns of green and red and black. And, mm. That's way cool. Oh, yeah. So this would be the one to go back in the whole building. Mm. Seen anything interesting? The kids are dark, and so I know. And the one in that room was doing something. Oh, for me, this is the most active one. Around. That's right you here. walk this yeah. way. Are you, are you familiar with the music box? Yes. The one that puts out Looks like on top of energy it. fields and yes. when it goes into it, like it. They, they the, use it. The yeah. um, I never seen one before. There was a group here with one about six months ago. I got, um, as the vice president of the historical society, I got a call um, about midnight. Someone was posting pictures of themselves inside the high school. So they wanted me to go run them out and board up whatever window they came in. So I came over and got my got my tools and came over and put my key in the door and it's like, I can't go in there, it's too creepy at night. I just can't go in there. So I came back in the next morning when the sun's up and everything's happy and found it to be that window was the one that he came in. So I'm boarding it up and about halfway, Tucker, about halfway through the project, he took off. And I couldn't get him to come back in here. He went out and laid by the door. Actually, the door was open. He went out and laid by my truck. I could not get him to come back in here. Really? So he finished up and took off. And, and um, that night, there was a group came in and had a music box. It's the first one I've ever seen. Uh -huh. um, and they sat it here. And I came in about midnight or so. Uh, and I sat on the floor over there. The music box is just playing and playing and playing and playing. It wouldn't play. So I didn't know what else to do. No one else. There's about eight people in here. I said, hey, if, if whoever you are, if you're the reason this music box is, won't shut off, and are you why my dog won't come in here and it stopped playing? I'm thinking, that's kind of interesting. It could be coincidence, you know, I've been, but I've been sitting here for six, seven minutes and it hasn't stopped playing. Yeah. I said, okay, if you're why my dog won't come in here, play one note. I didn't even know it was possible to play one note, but yeah, this being one note. Okay, I'll go get Tucker if you play two notes on the machine. <laughs> You're like, I'm testing notes, you. Like, okay, <laughs> you got my attention now. I'm just I'm looking around the room. There's some pretty big eyes here. It's like, they've never seen it do that either. Well, yeah, so those are really cool. Those he, are he really cool. In here. I went out to get him, and he wouldn't come in. So I put his leash on, and by the time he gets home, I'm dragging him down the hall. I'm like, I'm not going to do that to my dog. No. Yeah. Whatever's in here, he doesn't want to be here. Yeah. So I came back in, and the machine had turned was off. Uh, since I since I left and I came back in and I sat down and I said I'm sorry I can't get Tucker to come in whatever you did to him he doesn't like so I started playing again and said okay I'm gonna try one more time if you turn the machine on and it went on so I went and said and you know we had a man to man talk and uh, he's just not <laughs> it's <come."> okay <laughs> so I came back in and I said I'm sorry whatever you did to Tucker I can't make him come in and the machine shut off and for the rest of three hours the people sitting here didn't make a single peep nothing the rest of the night oh I don't blame you, Tucker. So yeah. I don't know what's going on, but the last time we were here was in the evening, and he stood out here and he was staring at something down the hall. Mm -hmm. Those those music boxes, Jared, they 
work on very, very low frequency changes. Well, they put out a signal. And so most they, of the machine will sense something going on. This thing puts out like a like a field. It's like it's like the laser grids. Uh -huh. If you put out a laser grid, and you can see if the dots are moving. That means something's disturbing the light. Is it like an active surveillance? Uh -huh. and the music box is like so that. kind of like a radar kind of yeah, situation. Puts out some sort of energy that most of them, like the ones you download with your phone or the sensors, are looking for some sort of energy input. They don't put out a signal on their own. They're just looking for something. It's passive. Yeah, but the music box actually makes a feel, it looks for disturbance. It's field. an active, okay. Mm. So, um, we have a regular classroom here. Just scan Doing the truss work. Man. Yeah, so the tools are dusty, the floor is dusty, mostly because the roof started leaking so bad that we figured, you know, doing anything in here is going to be a waste of time. So we're going to wait till the roof gets on and then we start inside. Yeah, yeah. We have original fixtures. Um, wow. There's no outlets. Nobody had anything to plug in then. So yeah. they didn't really need it. Um, so the only thing they use power for is lights and blowers. Well, you would come into a project like this and just think, where do I start? Well, there's oh. a lot of that. So in my view, Gosh. you pick one classroom and, and Yeah, and work spread on out. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and I have a classroom picked out when they get the roof done. But um, I just got a word from John just yesterday, the, the engineer guy. We just nailed a, um, a, a grant for $33,000 for windows. Oh, oh, God. We just got awarded this last week. That's good. There's a lot of grant money out there if you just know how to yeah, write I mean, them. They got knocked out of money like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of it was matching fonts, you know, which is where you guys come in. It's like, you know, 20 bucks will knock down $60, $80 from the state. The yeah. Right. It's a and big deal. So they had a blackboard or something. It looked like a pinup board into a blackboard mm -hmm. and that's more good. blackboards. It surrounded the whole room. All the way around, kept the window. That's, that's. Well, I went to college at Colorado State, and it was like that. And they had, they were mounted on on runners, so they could ride on this event. And then about. run it up, and yeah. you yeah. had, yeah, yeah. So they do that. There's right. a lot of blackboards. And I don't know if the original. I don't think they had slate. I think it was painted, painted wood. Probably. Probably a, a heavy coarse paint that was. Yeah, paint with sand in it. Yeah. Yeah, All right, let's go down here to the boiler room. Mm -hmm. You can see there is some significant work. Okay, you guys, fall back here. Come on, right. Fall back here. You can go back here. Okay, Mike had a truck. There's a couple of things I have trouble with. One of the things we do when I when I when we finish the tour is I come back and I close all the doors and like that door right there. I come in, I close it, and that hatch sometimes that's up I've had a banana and half probably five times it just goes down on dirt it's a crawl space uh -huh. and that door we even closed it at the beginning of the tour and then come down at the end of the tour and it's open again look at that hatch on the floor there yeah. it's the access to the to the kind of under the crawl space yeah, yeah. Crawl space. yeah this is the space you can see over there so close that door and latch it see what's the core going on right now there we go. She's having a hard time pulling it. <laughs> Had to push it hard. Okay. So this is the furnace one. So now we're the furnace was. Yeah. We have no idea what it looks like. We don't even have a picture. Good, yeah. So if you're ready to picture, we want to see it. That's... Notice the stonework? Yeah. It's very strong, but it's not, it's just a different style. So they just stone and then they just laid plaster. Yep. And this is the coal room. Uh huh. Yeah. Then we just throw coal in the window when they get loads of it. in there and then if someone shows it up. A lot of coal rooms had an auger in the floor that mm -hmm. feeds it into the fire, but this one had a guy. Yeah. Yeah, with the shovel. Yeah. The principal will have to come down here once every hour and throw another. Yeah. You see, the stone work in here is even a different. Yeah. Uh, so you take a big rock and then you, you pack it in with small rocks. Yeah. Put in a big rock. Pack Some it of it they rocks. cut flat, but a lot of it they just. Yeah. And that's always, I've always found that the neatest, the yeah. artistic 
So in that style, you put in a big rock and then you make it work. Mm -hmm. the other ones, they you know they buy a bunch of big rocks and put them together. So it's plenty strong. It's just a completely different style. Yeah. Yeah. So the story goes, the story goes with quotes that there was a kid in here was getting away from his teacher. I think from his teacher and a little bit of coal got delivered and he got buried in here. Oh. So it's not in any of our newspapers. That's not for sure, but it's. Several sources report that, so got him. That's why I quote the story goes. Yeah, yeah. Well, if it was a story, it would have been to scare kids out of here, <laughs> or it was true. It could be true, it could be not true. Close so that door behind you there. Yep, hang on. He's gonna close that door. You guys follow us. Yeah. <laughs> Something moves. Yes, oh, it's that, it's that door over there. Yes. Close. Oh. Ooh. That, he took a picture of that in there. Huh. Let's look. Okay, so we got a picture of something in there. I the phone told him to. We're not done yet. Well, we might want to see this picture right. real quick. There's more to come. Yeah, very interesting. What is that? Is it know. saving the pictures as you take I them? I hope so. I'll take a screenshot just in case. That is I don't think that'll be the last. Oh, good. Good. Yeah, keep no. holding that up. So this is the boy's bathroom. Oh. Quite a bit of all. Yeah. I'm guessing the lion was still at the girls' bathroom. Oh, yeah. And boys could do 80% of their business on their feet. So this is this is my least favorite room. Yeah. I don't come in here in the daytime by myself. Really? Anytime. You don't like it? You just don't? I don't, I don't like it. I get the feeling there's a, a sixth grade punk in there. Mm. Some <laughs> bully. Small thing is dangerous. I just get the feeling like... You can't wait to wait to give me the release. Mm. Are you getting activity in here, Cody? I'm. It feels different in here I don't from like out it. there. I don't know why, it's but I in here I agree. It it feels heavier. Um, what was this? Is this a that's, stairway? That's stairway. Yeah, we're going up there. Max. No. I wonder why this feels cooler. I don't know. It just does. So we'll go up here. The first step is kind of tall, so okay. Okay. Do you know what I took her? Oh, wow. <laughs> this is the first, huh? <laughs> This is really cool up here. This is. Look at look at that. Wow. This looks like a stairway. Like something off of a labyrinth or, or Harry Potter or whatever. Yeah, it's there somewhere. Walk around. I just point out a few things. There's a, there's a skylight up there. Give you a view of that. This beam here is not original. All of those beams that are holding up the corners of the skylight are not original. So okay. it's just open. It w that, the whole skylight was suspended up there. We put in all those beams to keep it from falling any further. Oh, yeah. Wow. So when you guys started this project, you just kind of went through and said, that's a weak point. We need to do this. Or well, was it sagging? Leaks, because that's starting to sag. And you can, you can see if you look carefully at the wooden joints, uh, we'll t talk about it when we go up the steps. Some of the wooden joints are coming apart, and you can infer from that what's moving. You can feel the floor is going down a little bit here. You can see the floor mm -hmm. is coming down there. Yeah. And that's because the skylight is all, now it's pressing on here. You used to be pressing on the outside. It was pushing everything down. Yeah, so now it's now the weight is right here. Um, Jerry does a lot of uh, photography training. She's uh, just a, a word about her. You met her. She 
when she finished her photography training, she spent a year in, in Montana and Wyoming. She's done some work with National Geographic. And she's she's real. When she got out of her training, I put some of her stuff online. I put her in an international online contest. There are about 15, 16,000 photographers, and each one puts in four pictures. So there's about 45, 50,000 photos. She had two in the top ten. Wow. And she was number two overall out of 16,000 photographers. Oh. Wow. It was a big deal. She's very so she humble because I was yeah. asking her what kind of, oh, I just take pictures of stuff. Yeah, there were only, <laughs> there were only nine people in the top 100 who were U.S. citizens. Everyone else is from all over the world. It really was a big contest. Anyway, she does training, and one of her, one of her groups, um, the photographer was sitting here, somewhere around here, and took a picture and submitted it to Travel Nevada and took first place in Travel Nevada Photography Contest 2018. It's a gorgeous picture. And if you're a photographer, you look around, the light's kind of always kind of brown, kind of yellow, kind of soft, and even in the middle of the day. So when she does her photography groups, sunlight, I mean, sun, the sunrise and sunset are the important times for photographers. But you can come here any time of day. So this is where they come in the middle of the day because the light's always good. Mm. Anyway, it's a very photogenic building. Oh, yeah. All the wooden surfaces are original. We've got to try to restore them. Or these, them. these here? It's just the way they were. Lots of plaster. Yeah, and you see the, the finished carpentry. I don't know if you noticed downstairs or on that stairway there, there's, um, we call that wainscoting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty simple. It's just tying into the boards. And this here is a different, a different level of performance. This is finished carpentry. Mm -hmm. There's no plywood. That, those are boards. Mm. That's awesome. So we're going to this classroom here. Do you notice the windows? How light it is in here? Yeah. Wow. Those windows are big windows. You can see there's a lot of pull right there. Yeah. So if when this when the roof gets done and the water damage stops, okay. this is probably I would spend probably a month working on this, pick up the floor. We finished the floorboards and we finished the, the pan on the side. Um, I don't think I tried to put in a chalkboard. I probably wouldn't do the, the plaster on my, on my roof, but um, I'd like to do the woodwork on the floor and get it back up to what you think it looked like in 07. Uh -huh. and, uh, and now that John has money for windows, he wants to start on the south and the, and the west side for windows. So this building may well, this room may have well have windows in it in two weeks, which I think would be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it would. It's a huge step. We're definitely coming back. A huge step in yeah. in getting this yeah. structurally sound is the windows. Yeah, so the front steps and the windows and the brick veneer on that side is all should be supposed to be done before Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. John is just, I mean, he's a hero. Uh, those grants, the there's that, an art to writing those. When he those. started writing grants, that, that south wall was nothing more than a pile of red rocks. I mean, it really was a mess. And the whole building is falling towards the towards the fracture, and it doesn't take very long. No. No. Um, no. So we have a teacher. You guys are salvaging this. We have a teacher's office in here. And here we have a room in the floor with the, the um, flush tank. It has a hardwood finish outside and a galvanized metal inside. And that hung on the wall right there. They just pull oh, the cord okay. and they yeah, drop the wall. Yeah, pull the cord and flush it. A little wash basin. So this used to be a wall here, the door's here. You see the sink is there, it only has a cold water. So the wall came. Water. Yeah, so that was the wall. The door's right here. We got a lot of window space. And that, well, that's rough. That, that two ball is of interest for a lot of paranormal people. I don't know why, but. Yeah. That's how I can rotate it backwards and start putting it back forwards and see how long it stays. So it changes. Yeah. I'm a bottle guy. It's an interesting bottle, but the, cube, the, the pool ball is more interesting now. For whatever reason. Yeah. It's I don't know why it gets rotated. Maybe somebody sneaks away. <laughs> See that? Now this floor is kind of blue, and when it gets wet, the wood swells, and that's why you have the humps in it. Oh, you, can't, you can't push it back. 
you have to you have to start in the corner and take up all the boards and, and then start again. Relay what you can and then replace what you can. Yeah. It looks like it's all usable and if it's not there's a lot of room to have spare board. Yeah. But you can get yeah, even just one or two classrooms all the way refinished and yeah, that would be super cool. You could even take another classroom that you're not going to refinish. You're just going to maybe yeah, take plexiglass like over the damage area yeah. so they can see what they did. Oh, yeah, this was coming down. So there's um, probably was 1940 riding. Really? This is the original that was in here? Which is the largest country? Well, original in my view is 1907. It's not that old. Which it's is probably the 40s. Which is the largest country, I don't know anybody writes like that country in That's, North America? That looks like what is the population of the United States? What is wow. the most important? Please do not erase. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's surprisingly little tagging going on in here. Yeah. I think it's because it's a long ways from Vegas. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm a Vegas fan, but yeah. if we're if we're 30 miles from Vegas, the place would be destroyed by spray oh, paint. Oh, it would be spray painted top to bottom. Yeah. yeah. Sadly. So for having it be unlocked and open for 50 years, I'm I'm willing to settle for that. Yeah. Oh, you too. A A four, A A one. Wonder if that's how they mark which board you're working on. Maybe first grade. There's more than one grade in here. Fourth yeah, grade. Or, or AA1, we're going to do, you know, uh, geography. AA2, we'll do some science. or Yeah. Yeah. We don't know. Make it wherever you want. It'd be neat, nice if you could find a lady who taught here. Who, or uh, someone who went to school here. Well, I was working on the roof one day, and then I came down from the roof. Car loaded with four people in the car out in front, and it turned out that three of those people had gone to school here. They yeah. were, there were three ladies and a guy. And three of the ladies had gone to school here, and I said, "Is there anything I could do to can I buy you a room, buy you a beer, buy you a meal, whatever I need to get? Come in and tell me some stories." None of them would set foot in here again. They said that place was creepy when I was in, in school there. Really. Yeah, and even the girls, even when the school was in session, they wouldn't go to the bathroom here. They'd go home, take a whiz, and come back here and go back to class. Oh. They would not go in that bathroom. Oh. So they said there's absolutely nothing I can do short of a subpoena to get them to come back home. <laughs> Which, you know, that's, to me, that's horrible. But wouldn't you, wouldn't they be okay sitting across the street and tell you about it? I'd be happy if they come up on the front porch. They yeah. wouldn't even come inside the fence. Oh man. So this is, this is this is as close to the building as I'm gonna get. That's what they all said. Was this a shop class? This is a science lab, yeah. Yeah, science lab. So we think there's um we have different paint as the where these pipes have water or gas. Yeah. I think they're gas pipes. Um, so I think they had a Bunsen burner. Mm -hmm. And I think these had were um racks and had water and jars with water in them. Little beakers and yeah. such. Yeah. And the chemistry and cabinet is right behind you there. And oh, um, yeah. Over on Jerry's property, there's a 1907 house that I'm working on now in the cabinet, but it's just like that. Same hardware, same stuff. Could have well been built by the same person, but it's in the same time. The principal said, hey, I need a cabinet. Yeah, and probably is. I mean, you see a lot of neighborhoods where they all have the same roof. Mm -hmm. You know, the roofers in, in the area, hey, do one while you, before you leave. And uh, uh, that could have happened. I don't Specialization. know. Specialization. Yeah. Interesting. So this is the science room. A lot of people come in and write in the plastic and come back and see if the ghost gave them an answer and all that. I haven't seen uh -huh. anything significant that I've had any faith in here. So. Well. Not yet. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. I think that was gas. Because look at that ball valve. It looks like gas to me. It's a little more ball valve than yeah. they have with the uh, Yeah, and um, with water. But John, the engineer, says there wasn't any natural gas in town. But um, I don't know if you're familiar with carbide. 
Uh -huh. Carbide lamps, you drip uh -huh. water onto it. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if there was a carbide generator somewhere and you, drip, and you just produce gas. And when you go home, you turn off the water, the gas stops, and then so when you need gas, you turn on the... That the may have had there. gas delivered. It could be. There's probably some places... But if I didn't have liquid, liquid propane, it probably yeah. would have been either natural gas or... I don't know, that's my guess. It probably was um, carbide, hydrogen from the carbide generator. I don't really know. Nick said there's no gas in town, but I think uh, uh, what looks to me like gas lines on our property. Those are, those are large ball valves. They're what? Those are large ball valves on there. Yeah. Those are the, the pipe no bust. If you need water, you don't need it to pick over the pipe. Nope. So what the sounds? Okay, so this is the main stairway. It's in actually really good shape, considering the age of this. So again, you see the finished carpenter, you can see the, you see the gaps that are forming here? Yep. Uh, and the gap here? Yep, it's pulling away. So this is all indication that this part of the step of the building is sinking. When you look up, can you imagine all these beams that are holding that up? They're yeah. not here. It's a pretty magnificent sight. Wow. It's amazing that it stayed that it stayed up. Yeah. Well, the high school I went to, they didn't have any windows. When you get in there, they don't want any distraction. Mm -hmm. like you're here, you're ours. Do we say you're not? Yeah. <laughs> there was yeah, a couple that. bars on that one. So this, yeah, this is beautiful. It's all original wood. Yeah. It's not been restored. Now, when it rains, this gets pretty wet. So one of my jobs is to put a plastic and, and get it to drain into buckets and come and change the buckets every hour or two until it's raining. Yeah. We do get a fair amount of rain here. It comes in half three quarter inch segments. Yeah. So when it rains, Desert it's pretty rain wet. The type that was manhole covers. Yeah. Or if we get a snow, six inch snow, you sit oh. on the roof, that's... That's got to be the scariest time. That and the weight of the snow. Let's see, what's going here? <coughs> this one of your catches. Another classroom. You see the stonework there is, looks like it completely different. There's no pile in there at all. Yeah. And if I were doing it, that's probably what, what it would look like. Because it's very strong. It's beautiful. And there's, there's no no lines, you ever get a crack going, so that's probably how I would do it, but not how most of the building is. If you look up here, you see the two arched windows. Uh-huh. I guess to imagine bats and things flying in. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, have to owl. say the magic word. Um, there's owl feathers. Yep. And if you, if you notice or notice that there's not a, a rat smell, there's no mouse smell, <laughs> it's because an owl lives here. Let him stay. Jerry thinks there are three. I think there's, I've seen what I think is a small one and a bigger one, but I'm not really a birder, so I don't know. But I know he's, the one I've seen is, one, the one I think is a smaller one is about this tall. And his wingspan is probably Big owl. six feet. Jeez. But I think that's how he gets in and out. Yeah. And if somebody ever. And he hunts in here. If somebody ever puts glass in those arch windows, I'm going to break it out. Because oh, yeah. I want the owl here. <laughs> well, if they Whatever do. it takes to get the owl here, I want it. Well, it, well, if they do, just make sure they put it on, uh, just one of them on a hinge so that you can have it yeah. open. Yeah, pull it, you know, pull the cord here and the, and the window open. Have it so that it hinges inside so you can, so it can be trapped inside, not blown around outside. and just Make it like a doggy door. Yeah, yeah. There you, you go, have the flat. And <laughs> you go in head first. And, yeah, that is yeah, a lot of yeah. that cool. So that's one of my catchment basins there. That that wall gets pretty wet. There's a there's a, a joint between the eaves that you can see up there, and that wall that has failed completely. So you can see the sky up through there, and that gets pretty wet. So you can't prevent the water from getting to here. But I'm trying to prevent it from going down, down, down further. Yeah. So that's what the that plastic bin for can catch and trap it. Yeah, me and my family. You can see here this. this so, you, where'd wall. you guys find these big, uh, what is it, 2 by 12 or 6 by 12s? Yeah. 
Yeah, and this is bracing to keep the keep the skylight up. Because I think that was the origin of the problem is the skylight was sinking a little bit. Mm -hmm. The roof is pretty much flat. So when the skylight sinks, now it's not flat, it's a collector. So yeah. it takes a pretty good roof to have a be a swimming pool in that roof. Mm -hmm. so that's the next project. Well, and you can see that one right there is bowed. Mm-hmm. So it's the whole roof is, was shifted that way a little bit and it bowed That's that. a huge space up there. That, you know, that, um, Who is it, 14 the foot? The ceiling here and the roof is probably 20 feet. It's Jeez. way up there. And you can notice here how high the ceiling is. These ceilings are, are 12 feet. Yeah. And so there's no way you're going to heat this space with a radiator. No, there's no way. Why, why did they build them so tall, do you think? Well, I think it's just artistic. It's yeah. a feeling of, you know, make, space. Make the, and, yeah. make the school yeah, inviting totally. and welcoming. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. They didn't have really good windows either. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they went all out. So this one, this one here is windows all around. I, I call this the bonus room. I get the the vision that there's a senior who's got good grades, all his homework is done, he can come out here and rebuild. Yeah. So that's, I have nothing to back that up. This is how it feels to me. It's very bright, very sunny. Yeah. It's a cool space. Yeah, there's, there's a blackboard there. Um, there is, and we get a, a north wind, there is a window, I think it's in this one that goes. Tap, tap, tap. It sounds really? exactly like someone. This one sounds like a rattling board. But that one sounds like someone knocking on the Like window. inside of its drag space. Yeah. It's and and we've come up there when the storm is, is going with people, and you can see that it, it looks like someone designed it to sound like tapping. It, it's, it's uncanny. I mean, it's just. I don't attribute it to anything but coincidence. Yeah. But from downstairs, it sounds really weird. <laughs> Dewey Decimal card. Oh, yeah. Probably from the 30s, maybe 50s. Um, these walls, they're laughing and plaster. You see, every time one of these laughing strips crosses a two by four, there's a nail, sometimes two. Mm -hmm. um, and they have nail guns, so there's just some guy with a you know, bag of nails and tap, tap, boom, tap, tap, boom, all day long. And every wall, every ceiling is latte and plaster. That's yeah. a lot of nails. Jeez. And some of these boards like these, those aren't sawn off, those are, those are chopped. So someone had a long piece of this and they chopped it off every two feet. And chop what they need and then it, yeah. some of them probably just break over the knee. Yeah, if, and if your axe doesn't cut it all the way, you break the rest. Like that. Yeah, that one. Well, that's a lot of repetitive work. Yeah, I've, uh, I've done plaster on mine. I'm not going to plaster. So I'm, yeah. I'm not going to try that either. Oh, yeah, that's cool. So this was a uh, cafeteria. Oh, auditorium. That ceiling is just under 14 feet. It's like 13, 10. It's oh, wow. way up there. And they had the arched. Well, that's plywood or veneer, and they didn't do veneer in, in 1910. So we think there was some sort of a remodeling in the 30s um, and when they put in the various stoves. Then there's a stove over there too. So the veneer I think is from 1930. And that obviously is not a 1907 fixture. No. It looks like you have a might maybe post Roswell. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah. Not 1907. Have you found any old newspaper clippings in the walls anywhere? What, you know, in the old days. I don't think they used any newspaper here. I, I haven't seen any. It's all been. I mean, the, the house that I'm doing was a lot of newspaper. There was a the, there was probably 10, 12 layers on the floor. We saved it, and that's uh, Goldfield, um, 1912, 1915. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty cool. And uh, so we saved it. We put, have some in plastic. You can read it over here. Wow, what are you even doing here? That's where he sits. See that, that white board going up there? Uh huh. He sits at the top of that. 
Are there other, other places that he sits? But that's where I normally see him. He's not here today. But his feathers are here, and his, his poop is here. Mm -hmm. I think they swallow, that's probably a rat, that's probably a mouse. Mm -hmm. When they make pellets, yeah. that's probably what you're seeing. I think they, they eat them whole, I don't think they chew them up. They up. eat them whole, they... grind them up, I think they spit the bones back yeah. out. Yeah, like, and a, then the... like a snake, they yeah. swallow them. And this thing was the main principal's office. Electricity here, and it was it was reliable. They had um, electricity in town came from uh, there's a hydroelectric plant in Bishop, which is about 120 miles. It's at the uh, base of the Sierras, about 120 miles west of here. It's a nasty road in the winter, but if you're hanging a power line, this. Um, and then they had two or three diesel generators. Uh, I think diesel is about 18. 1885, 1890. Mm -hmm. Diesel was pretty reliable by 1907. They had a couple of diesel generators out there in case the wires from Bishop failed. So they had they had a they had a power continuous and they had a couple of backup systems for it. Now somebody told me they thought this was a master clock. It definitely looks like clockwork, and they said these uh -huh. are wires that control all the other clocks and all the other classrooms. I'm not sure they had that kind of technology in 1907, but they might have. Could have been 1930. I don't know. Interesting. But it's an interesting comment. I, there's a lot of things that people tell me that I wouldn't have thought of. The original trim. That, wow. You know, hasn't been stolen. It's because it's. Because it's too high. Up there, 13 <laughs> feet high. Yeah, you have to haul in a big ladder to get up that mm -hmm. high. Kids aren't known for preparedness. Oh, got your toe. I don't want to wreck that. Yeah. Put it back. So that's pretty much a high school. So that's this cool. is like a little stage for yeah. whoever's giving the stage presentation. Picture the stand on. The picture down in that first classroom and there was a lot of people in the room back to this room. Oh. When you look at the picture, you see everyone is paying attention. Everyone is well dressed. Um, there's they're mixed with older kids and younger kids, all in the same room. And it was a privilege. Pulling hair. And yeah, it was, it was a privilege to be able to go to school. Yeah, and if you misbehave, you're gonna get a swat in the butt. Yeah. 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 They're not gonna call your mom. They're just gonna beat you. Yeah. yeah. Real your mom. School. Your mom will find out when you go home. Oh, yeah, and then your mom will beat you again. Yeah. <laughs> and then dad gets off work. Mm -hmm. yeah. He gets a piece of the action. Then you go visit grandpa over the weekend. And everyone gets a piece of the action. Well, I went to seventh and eighth grade in Mississippi in the, in the early, in the late 60s, early 70s. And we got out of it. We mm -hmm. caught chewing gum out in the hall. Bam, bam. Grab your ankles. Two swats with chewing gum. We mm. do homework, two swats for that. Mm. We need PE clothes, do one spot for each item you forget, which is two socks, two shoes, underwear, shirt, shorts. Boy, you forget your whole outfit. You're, <laughs> You're in trouble. I forgot my and whole gym, gym, gym bag. bag. Oh. So if you get caught wearing someone else's PE clothes, both of you get beat. Oh. oh, so it's like, I don't want to loan you my stuff because I don't want to get beat. It's not that way anymore. And that's probably a good thing to not have. Hell yeah. Right, let me close this door here. And I'll be next to the kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, some t some kids just need to be beat up once. I think. Well, like, you know, you're just a jerk. Right. You shouldn't be that way. And if someone were humble, you wouldn't be so. Yeah, these are there. There was wiring, and it was only for lights. Um, that old. And that's pretty early technology yeah, with is. everything being brass yeah. and yep. the unshielded wires. Uh, old, old bucket what I'm style. concerned about is that's plastic, and I, I don't know that they would have been plastic in 07. I'm thinking yeah. they might have been wood, they might have been brass, but I'm thinking that's more like the 30s. Mm -hmm. now you can see up there, see that big galvanized tank? Mm -hmm. 
So that's a water tank. It's about 3,000 gallons. Really? Wow. Oh, wow. So oh boy. So they brought the water up into that. And then it was gravity fed into everything? They, they didn't have enough water pressure in town to, to get up to this level. So they would bring a tank and pump it up there so they get water to here. Mm -hmm. Wow. And there's some, some downpipes that you can see. Yeah, there's over there. Probably was um, four five feet. Yeah. Uh, so that's the high school. Wow. That is awesome. Other questions? I think it's great you guys are restoring it or, or salvaging it. Stopping it from falling. Yeah, yeah kind of a rescue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. that's perfect. Yeah, and so was, if it stays this this way, when I'm when my shift is over, I've done my job. I need to hand it mm -hmm. to the next generation. Yeah. Sure. So, there interestingly enough, there are some kids who come in, like high school kids, who are very interested in that. That blows me away. I like to see that. Sure. Because mm -hmm. the you know you, you think of that generation as being of, um, kids who don't care about anything that's not on their phone, but some. So people are getting pretty interested in the building. I think it's, because it, all it takes is one generation to not care, and the yeah. building's gone. Yeah. yeah. So it's not going to, it's not going to stand after 20 years of, of, of non-custody again. Right. I mean, it, there, there were 50 years where no one was taking care of it, no one was watching, no one was babysitting it. And I think that pretty much did it in. So if, if we're not here, if somebody's not here, it's not, it's not going to survive. Wow. Because no. it's gone through its, its ability to withstand weather that's awesome that's mm. awesome so let's go on down go Tucker go Tucker <laughs> so this rail has been getting rained on for about 40 years and I'm just so impressed with the wood quality yeah you can take something from Home Depot and you shoot that for I was going to say our banisters don't it's look gonna, that good it's going to be nothing but firewood <laughs> It's not in great shape, but it's still a rail. Yeah. You probably could take that belt tender and make oh, a yeah. out of that. So this is the original thing. There's, this doesn't get wet, and it makes it pretty Yeah, the bottom of the stairs. This yeah. Is pretty good shape. It's starting to get a little bit of water. Right? This is this is what it all looked like before. Yeah. Labor and things. Beautiful woodwork. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, we have a machine down in the furnace room that will make these. Some of them have been remade. We have a, a machine that will we'll make them. We have this pattern, so we can do that and a bunch of blanks. So when the water damage goes away, we'll. Put some more up. Looks like whoever did that one did a pretty good job. They know what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. And this, the height of so this, in 1907, the average guy was 5'7. Uh -huh. The average girl was 5'1, something like that. But if you built a new high school like this, it'd be 10 to 15% of the guys couldn't walk under here. Yeah. But then, back then, if you if you hit on this, you're a freak. <laughs> this is yeah. freakishly tall. Yeah. I don't think anyone in Goldfield was that tall. It could have been, but. And then there's the doll. I hate right. that doll. <laughs> <laughs> so the doll just stays there? The, the well, the doll used to be in that classroom. And then someone brought her up here and she's been there for a yeah. couple months. to come back in here. Yeah. Hmm. Makes you wonder. Yeah, there was a guy from, um, there was a professional group from Portland Northwest Curiosity Society. They come here twice a year and have a big 
big deal. They bring 40, 50, 60 people with them. Um, and one of their guys was sitting back there with, a, with his equipment, just kind of hanging around, looking around. It was dark, it was at night, kind of thought. And he felt like somebody was sitting on his lap. And so he got up and he moved, because he kind of shook him a little bit. And he came up here and he said, that was her. So that girl sat on his lap. Oh, jeez. What's that? I said, oh, jeez. Yeah. That... It's kind of weird. The lady on the right. But if you're going to pick a girl that's going to be sitting on your lap, it's probably more likely to be her. She yeah. kind of looks kind of, kind of flirty, like rebellious. I would hope this one, though, because she looks like she doesn't <laughs> weigh anything. <laughs> <laughs> And the one in the back looks like she's ready to beat somebody. Yeah, the one in the back? Yeah. 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 So I don't know who those people are, but anyway, he swore that was who was sitting in his lap. Ooh. It says, go away. I can't document it. Oh. It's been said. It's been said. Well, that door's, both doors are still shut. Yeah. You don't like that doll over there? Yeah, this is the um, Mac of Nevada, California. You see it's dated 92, 95. Um, the publication date is 1907. Oh, wow. Copyright. But you can see, here's Nevada, there's no Las Vegas. Las Vegas should be right around here, there's not one. Uh, but there is a gold field, it's right there. Wow. Oh. On Columbia Mountain. Wow. So there you have it. Awesome. All right, Tucker, good yeah. job. Thanks so much for the, well, yeah. for the tour. Thanks for stopping and looking around. Yeah. Oh, we'll be back.